But Kerry didn't offer a much different policy or say the US should pull out. Many of the other Bush critics two or three years ago said pulling out would result in chaos and civil war. Since then, a couple thousand American troops have died and chaos and civil war have erupted. Now, John Kerry, like many other critics of Bush's Iraq policy, mostly focused on that unilateralism and bad timing. Well, I have to say, a UN-sponsored war on Iraq would have likely been worse. When something is an act of aggression, you don't want more aggressors joining in on the trouncing. And sometimes this talk about the Iraq war being a break from past traditions, it fails to recognize a couple important things. One, the US government has been involved in overthrowing foreign regimes and starting aggressive wars for a long time, for more than 50 or 100 years, depending on what precisely we're talking about. And two, it was the supposedly wide and wise and wonderful tradition of American empire for global stability that got us into this huge mess in the first place. It was Eisenhower, and we all like to quote him, and he's, you know, in retrospect, he's not as terrible as some of the guys now, but it was him whose CIA installed the Shah. It was under, you know, the Johnson and Nixon administrations that, that the U.S., um, actually started backing uh, the Ba'athists, according to uh, Roger Morris uh, from the National Security Council. It was under Jimmy Carter that Brzezinski, who now warns against war with Iran, to his credit, spearheaded a policy to support the Islamist extremists in Afghanistan for the purpose of inciting a Soviet invasion and then fighting it off as part of the Cold War. Ah, the good old days. Under Reagan, the US government assisted Osama and, and really threw its weight behind Saddam. This was back when Saddam was doing all those nasty things that were later used to justify regime change, his overthrow. Reagan also helped out the Iranians with some missiles, but that was a side project. It was Bush Sr., that wise, venerable statesman, who ruined the opportunity of a lifetime at the close of the Cold War, attacking Iraq to protect Kuwait. This particular intervention, along with the ones in Afghanistan, starting under Carter, that, that might have been the, most, the worst of all the supposedly wise, measured Middle Eastern policies of times past. It was at the end of this war that the US bombed water treatment facilities, prevented the importation of chlorine, and imposed some of the most cruel and unusual trade sanctions in world history. It was also during this war that thousands of troops were stationed in Saudi Arabia. Bill Clinton didn't pull those troops out of Saudi Arabia. And he didn't end the sanctions on Iraq. His ambassador to the UN, Madeleine Albright, said on 60 Minutes that they were, quote, worth it, end quote, as a means of overthrowing Saddam, despite the hundreds of thousands of dead Iraqis. Clinton then made her a Secretary of State. The United Nations supported that first war in Iraq and made those sanctions possible, giving some international cover for the brutality and it was under Clinton that the Iraqi Liberation Act of 98 was passed, which established Iraqi regime change as American policy. In this sense, Bush didn't break from tradition at all. He was just carrying the torch, although it was he who finally dropped that torch on Iraq's oil fields. It was this tradition of American foreign policy before 9-11 that led to 9-11. Bush isn't to blame for everything, just a whole heck of a lot. And it was also under this enlightened, respectful tradition that America waged total war all over the globe. This began in earnest, probably, during World War II, when the US firebombed dozens of Japanese cities, even before Hiroshima and Nagasaki. This tradition was continued during the Korean War, where the US government introduced napalm warfare, targeted North Korean civilians, bombed dams to cause flooding, and killed a million or more. It was brought down on the Vietnamese people, killing hundreds of thousands, if not millions of them. It was what inspired Nixon to bomb Cambodia, which led to blowback in the form of a much strengthened Khmer Rouge. And it was also what inspired Carter to assist the Khmer Rouge in its conflict with the Vietnamese. And also, to, it, it was, it was Unbelievably, you know, the, the, these, these anti-communist uh, uh, administrations like uh, Carter did, did everything they could to keep the Khmer Rouge 
uh, in the United Nations as, um, as the proper uh, representatives of their country. And, it, and then Reagan, you know, funneled millions of dollars to, to the Khmer Rouge. It was this tradition, this, this supposedly pre-9-11 good tradition of the realists, that, that guided several generations of American politicians to support any right-wing dictator who was anti-communist or anti-drug, supposedly. Now, sure, the international community might have backed a lot of this American aggression more than the current war, but if that means the U.S. It was able to get away with more mass murder, this is hardly something to be nostalgic about. Whether or not the U.S. government has global support for a war does not determine its morality. Whether or not both political parties agree to butcher masses abroad should not be our biggest concern. All this ties to the superficial reasons that people either support or oppose war, depending on their partisan loyalties or ideological prejudices. Back in the 90s, when Clinton was sending the military all over the globe, there was a post-Cold War right-wing resistance to much of it. Part of it was because they just couldn't stand that draft dodger sending American troops on nation-building missions. His justifications were largely internationalist, not nationalist. He had the UN, he and the UN laughably called the situation in Haiti a threat to international peace as he deployed 20,000 Marines to secure democracy there. Republican Bob Dole from Kansas challenged Clinton's power to do this without congressional approval. A few years later, Clinton said he was protecting the world from genocide when he bombed Serbia, killing lots of people. Ex-presidential candidate Bob Dole largely approved this time. But most congressional Republicans opposed Clinton's foreign policy, especially the NATO-backed Kosovo War. The right wing largely opposed it, and so did many, you know, well, all, you know, all real libertarians. And we were all labeled uncaring about foreign innocence. Much of the left defended the war. Some even called conservatives unpatriotic. With the Iraq war and war on terror, we've seen the flip-flop. A good example of how the discourse change can be seen in the words of the American Legion. During the Kosovo War, the Legion passed a resolution that said in part, quote, neither the President nor the Congress have defined America's objectives in what has become an open-ended conflict characterized by an ill-defined progressive escalation. It is obvious that an ill-planned and massive commitment of US resources could only lead to troops being killed, wounded or captured, without advancing any clear purpose, mission, or objective. The resolution stated that without guidelines being set, including a clear exit strategy, the US should, quote, withdraw American forces immediately, end quote. Fast forward six years to 2005, and it's the Iraq War. And the American Legion's national commander says, quote, public protests against the war here at home, while our young men and women are in harm's way on the other side of the globe, only provide aid and comfort to the enemy. Well, this is interesting. But the left, on the other hand, has not hesitated to attack this war savagely, sometimes claiming principle against the very act of bombing civilians. But many on the left were silent or even cheering when Clinton sent troops abroad and dropped bombs on civilians eight years ago. This goes back a long way. It was the left, at least the non-communists, who were most enthusiastic in the early Cold War for Truman's collective security, cheering on the deployment of American troops in Korea. It was the right that was a little hesitant, at least until the Cold War became their number one unifying principle. Was it that the Korean War was justified and the Vietnam War wasn't? or vice versa? Was bombing civilians and bridges and TV stations and pharmaceutical plants okay when Clinton did it? Or was that wrong, whereas Bush is doing it with some justification? We hear different arguments for foreign intervention, generally falling under the categories of nationalist and internationalist. But many of them rely on a little of both. Now, many people mark the beginning of um, American empire and the Spanish-American War. It's not, a, it's not a bad argument to make. Originally, the, you know, the people who really wanted the U.S. to start going abroad to slay monsters, I'd say were mostly nationalists. Uh, as the frontier was closing, they wanted to expend, expand American power. There was this, there was this view that uh, the U.S. needed a huge navy like all great empires. 